Now this is going to be probably the most boring video ever. This one I thought when I bought this card. But now, almost a year later, I finally sat down and I thought to myself, okay, let's create this video. And what I found was, well, this card isn't that boring at all. Well, hello there and welcome to a new video over here on Anton's Hardware Channel. So today we're going to talk about the Creative XFi Extreme Audio PCI Express. A card that I thought was extremely boring, but while preparing for this video became, well, rather interesting because it had some interesting features on it that I haven't seen in a lot of other cards. For instance, this card has two digital to analog converters and two analog to digital converters, which is kind of interesting. Also, it has some op amps on there, which isn't that standard. Um, they aren't swappable, but I'll get back to it well after this. Um, before we go there, first some general specifications, and then we're going to dive a bit deeper. The XFi Extreme Audio was the cheapest XFi in their complete XFi lineup. It was released in October of 2006 and it is capable of 24 bits and 96 kilohertz. And like the name says, it's PCI Express. I started looking at the card and well, I found some things interesting like the strange DSPs and the fact that it has two sets of digital to analog converters and analog to digital converters. Unlike the more expensive models, this x doesn't use the newer 20K1 DSP, but rather the CA106 or the EMU 10K1. The CA106 was used in the Audi G lineup, so why put the name x on it when it's really an Audi G card? Since Windows Vista, Microsoft doesn't allow direct access to the hardware level of your computer and in that way it killed off EAX and all those kind of environmental um, extensions. So since there is no need for a bigger DSP on your sound card, the need for the bigger, what was it, the 20K1 processor like the other x isn't really that necessary. And since they still had a large stock of those, well, uh, cheaper uh, Audigy DSPs, why not put it on there? And well, that's not such a strange idea. So and now for the digital to analog converters, which is what this card is, well, makes it very different and very interesting. There are two digital to analog converters on board, both of them made by AKM. One is the AK4359, which is 24 bits, 192 kilohertz, and is capable of driving eight channels. The other one is the AK4388, which is also 24 bits and 192 kilohertz, but it is only capable of driving two channels. So that got me thinking, why does it have two digital to analog converters? And my guess is that the uh, two channel one is the one for the front channel, so for your headphones, and the other ones are for the card itself. Now also there are two analog to digital converters on there and I'm guessing that the same thing is going on there. One is for the front panel and the other one is for the, well, card itself, the input output. They are both made by AKM. The one is the AK40, sorry, AK5358 and is capable of 24 bits and 96 kilohertz. There are four op amps on there, uh, which sadly aren't swappable. So overall, these components aren't boring at all. These are well quality components and I was really wondering what kind of influence does this have on the quality, overall sound quality of this sound card. So let's head over to the listening sessions just to see how good they were. And now for my listening sessions, well, it wasn't the best that I've ever heard, but it was still very capable and it was a lot better than most onboard solutions you have these days. Uh, the highs were crisp, but somewhat too crisp for my liking. The middles were creative, like all creative cards, a bit too overpowered and a bit too much going on. 
And the bass was there, but it missed, missed that oomph, it missed that really deep bass. But overall, it was a really good listening session. Uh, the soundstage was extremely wide and it wasn't difficult to pinpoint each location. So my guess is that the uh, stereo crosstalk, which you'll see in the Rightmark Audio and the live results, well, they were rather good. Overall, if I have to give this card a, a rating, I'd give it an average to good, let's say, an average plus. So and now the results for Rightmark Audio Analyzer. There are of course two digital to analog converters on there, so I'm going to compare those two and I also did the 12 several tests just to see what the differences are. Let's start with the rear panel. Now the rear panel is the panel on the card itself. Then let's head over to the front panel and then let's compare them. And these are the results for Rightmark Audio Analyzer. The general performance is a good, so that's nice to see. But there are three things that I'd like to pick out of these results. First of all, it's the frequency response, which gets a good. If you look at the graph itself, uh, it isn't that good. I mean, there's a lot of wobbly going on, uh, certainly in the lower frequencies, which isn't that nice to see. The other thing that I would like to point out is the total harmonic distortion in percentage. I mean, it gets a very good. I have seen more expensive cards that have a worse total harmonic distortion than this one. So that's a really good number to see. And last but not least is the stereo crosstalk, which gets a good. I mean, I've seen, well, the last couple of months, I've seen some um, external sound cards which get a stereo crosstalk that is really horrible from an average to poor to even some very poor. So it's nice to see that this card, although it's more than 15 years old, gets such a decent score. Well done. When you look at the results for the front panel, you can immediately see why I always say never use the front panel because those results are, there are even some pores in there and the, 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 the sound gets degraded so much by using the front panel that I, well, I just don't see why you should use it. You can get an instant audio and sound upgrade for free if you just move from the front panel to the rear panel. Now, if you compare those results, uh, the two of them together, you can immediately see that, well, the uh, front panel is just horrible. Uh, on every single front, the rear panel is way better than the other one. But besides all that, uh, these numbers are very interesting. If I look at the rear panel, just rear panel, how good do I think this card is? Well, I'm rather impressed by those numbers. Uh, the stereo crosstalk is uh, way better than I've seen on more expensive cards. So, very nice indeed. Now, as always, I installed the latest drivers of this sound card, but those drivers are already very old, from 2016. Now, after you install those drivers, you will always get the Creative Software Auto Update, which is a piece of software, well, that doesn't work and is just a lot of bloatware, in my opinion. But, okay, you can disable it rather easy, but it will be installed on your system always. But the actual driver interface for this sound card looks like this and it's a stripped down version of all the other driver interfaces from creative that really doesn't matter because well all the functionalities that you would want to have are here you have your speaker configuration to select which speakers you want to have the eax which is kind of interesting because those eax effects are disabled so the eax on this sound card isn't hardware based it's software based you have your x5 cmss 3d your crystallizer and of course the normal restore to defaults so that's it that's the spartan driver interface and now well is this card as boring as i thought one year ago more than a year ago well absolutely not i mean the, the card is excellent and um, that's also my conclusion if you want to get one uh, you cannot go wrong I mean, okay, the driver interface was somewhat uh, meh, um, but you're not going to see the driver interface after you've configured your card. Uh, other minor downside is that it's only capable of 96 kilohertz, 
but that's also something that's a minor issue. Overall, the sound quality was, well, rather average, goodish, and the, the results from Rightmark Audio Analyzer were also good. If you can find this card for, let's say, 25 euros, 25 dollars online, secondhand, well, there's no doubt you should definitely get one. It's a decent card with decent components, decent results, and everything's decent, and it's bound to be a lot better than your onboard solution. Uh, if you already have one in your system today, well, just leave it there. It's a more than capable card, and I don't think that the Sound Blaster Z or anything else in that, for that matter, will be a large step ahead or better or <laughs> however you describe it. Um, so with that ending, I'd like to thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video, and I would like to see you in the next one. See you then. Bye bye.